Today I embark on a diorama journey deep into the woods to learn how to make diorama trees. I have never made a good looking diorama tree and I hope I can change that today. I'm a little embarrassed to show you my first two tree attempts. Now I tried these out of XPS foam. This is supposed to be a stump that I was gonna make and I made this a few years ago and I am not proud of this. Then I tried, I don't even know what this, this is supposed to be a tree with branches. I, I, not good. I can't believe I'm saying this, but maybe XPS foam isn't the way I should go on this project. Maybe I need to try something different because I do think I can do a lot better than what I showed you guys. In the search for some alternate materials, I turned to YouTube and I found the channel Tabletop Witchcraft. On this channel, there's a very easy to follow tree tutorial and it looked really cool so I figured I'd give it a shot. To start this project off, we're gonna need some paper towel rolls, tin foil, a glue gun, and a whole lot of glue sticks. But before I do anything else, I ventured into the woods so that I could get proper inspiration for my diorama trees. Not only did I get a sense for what I wanted to do in this project, this experience really made me want to create a whole forest. Leave a comment if you'd like to see that. Time to get back to the workshop. And I do want to make one thing clear. I'm making diorama tree trunks in this video. So this video won't have instructions on tree canopies or any shrubbery at the base or anything like that. That could be in future videos. If that's something that you want to see, let me know in the comments. I start out by taking the tin foil and applying it from bottom to top all around the paper towel roll. I'm trying to cover as much of the paper towel roll as possible, but if there's a spot or two that doesn't have tin foil on it, no big deal. And that's because we're going to completely cover the tin foil with hot glue. This technique is designed to mimic tree bark, so after we've done this, when we paint it, it should really have a good realistic look to it. But the trade-off with this technique is you use a lot of hot glue sticks doing this process, so just keep that in mind if you don't have a lot of them on hand. Also, be careful where you place your hands because I burned myself a few times touching the hot glue that hadn't dried yet. One thing that I found success with is trying to do the bottom part first, let that dry, then flip it over and work your way the rest of the way on the tree. I'm applying the glue with an up and down movement pattern. Nothing too fancy, just want to try to get full coverage. And for some areas that were a little bit more stingy, I glued them down before gluing over top of them, like you see me doing here. Keep in mind, you don't have to be perfect. You'll see that after we do this, we're going to base coat this. And if we have any mistakes that come up, we can just do this process again over top and rebase coat. Just wanted to take a minute and show you guys something. So check this out. You can see this spot here is the paper towel roll, but I've covered it with glue. This was actually an accident. So you have, you know, the tree coming up, it jets out a little bit and then goes up. I noticed it while I was doing it, but I decided, hey, let me keep that because it kind of, I think when we paint it, it's kind of going to look like a cool, wild, gnarly knot on a tree, which, you know, there's all kinds of weird things you see on trees. So I decided to keep it, and I think, you know, we're going to have a ton of these in the background of a forest scene. Uh, there's all kinds of different looks trees have, and I think it looks really cool. And here's a good example of an abnormality that you could see in a tree trunk, similar to what I showed. So after letting these dry, here's what I've come up with. Here's two out of the three trees that I made for this project. And these are really solid. It's, it's kind of an interesting plasticky kind of feel, which is probably what you would expect because we were using hot glue. But I'm really excited about these, and also you might notice you know, these look different. One is uh, leaning a little bit to the side, and one straight up and down. They're also a little bit different thicknesses, and I really wanted to have them look different because no two trees are really going to look exactly the same. So it'll look a little bit more realistic in our ACBA photography in the diorama setups. 
So I'm really loving the look of these trees and it's capturing what I was hoping it would. But I do think that I might have a problem. You see, I created these trees to be used in 112 scale articulated comic book art photography. And I did that because I was inspired by this awesome action figure from G.I. Joe Classified series, Outback. He's a survivalist, an outdoorsman, so I wanted to give him an, a wooded environment to really thrive in. And I think really my issue is if I'm shooting him low, which I think would be really cool to do, I'm going to have some problems not having enough height on these trees. So the solution that I think I have to put in place is to extend the trees upward. All three trees are currently about 11 inches on the dot. So I think we need these to be about 15 inches tall each. So I just mark out an additional four inches and use a box cutter to cut it to size. So now what I'm gonna do is glue the cut paper towel rows with the straight edge on the bottom to the tops of each of these. And you'll notice that some of them are not gonna be exactly perfect, but that's okay because a lot of trees do kind of travel different directions as they grow upwards. This tree is a great example of what I mean. You can see that it doesn't travel straight up and down. There's some interest to it. So I think that'll be totally fine. And I'll glue them and then I'll do the same tinfoil hot glue process sped up. Now that we've got our height situated, it's time to base coat these, and I'm doing that with Anita's Black. I've never painted over top of hot glue before, and it's kind of a weird experience, but basically, I just take my time and try to get as much of this as possible, knowing that there are going to be some areas that I'm going to have to go back and do later. And in fact, I decided to spray paint those areas just to make sure that I got into the little nooks and crannies that were created by the hot glue. Hey, quick interruption. I messed these up. They don't look good. They are way too heavy handed on the glue. And that's not because of the tutorial I followed. The tutorial is really good. I just, this is my first time doing it and I used way too much glue. So what I'm gonna do is do a super sped up version where I redo it with a lot less glue and make them look a lot better. This time I'm not going to use multiple pieces of tin foil. I'm just going to use one and I'm not going to crinkle it. Okay, so last time, as you guys can see, there's all just globs and stuff all over this. And I'm still going to keep this and use it as like a background piece that's not in focus and figure out maybe I'll put some moss or ivy on it. But it's just, there's just, it doesn't look like tree bark. So what I did was I used uh, this glue gun, which is, I don't know, have a little bit better control of. And I focused on doing much thinner up and down lines. And I feel like that looks much better on the test piece. So I'm going to try to mimic what I did here on this piece. And then I'll also have trees with varying heights, which will help me in ACBA. I think there's a vast improvement here over what I did on the original. My biggest mistake the first time was just focusing on getting coverage and not focusing on realistic texture, which I think I did here. Speaking of realism, here's what the texture should look like, and this is also the color scheme that I'm going to go for. This is more of a gray tree that we're going for. Because of that, I base coated in gray, and I also have a bunch of different washes that I'm going to apply to this. So gray, black, brown, even some light beige, and some yellow. 
In case you're wondering, my washes are simply acrylic paint and water, just very watered down acrylic paint. And I start out with my gray, which is a little bit darker than the base coat that I used. Next up is black, and I just kind of apply this in different areas because I want this to have some subtle shading, subtle difference in the color. I like to add in those darker tones on the bottom where the roots are. Then I go back in with gray, and I just kind of apply it to some random areas along the trunk. After that dries a little bit, I go ahead and let gravity and texture work together, and I just dab the black wash on different areas on the trunk and let the paint just naturally work its way down the texture using gravity. I'm hoping that this is going to allow some really good color variety in the final product. I use that same exact process throughout the piece in different layers. So I just did wash after wash using this approach, adding in some different colors like this brown at the root base. I let the piece fully dry and then I decided to apply with black wash using this spray bottle. My feeling was that the tree is a bit too light. So what I'm going to do is spray from a distance and try to achieve a slightly darker gray across the entire piece so just spritzing this all over the trunk i think this is going to be a much more subtle way to apply the black wash than using a paintbrush which i think sometimes i'm a little heavy-handed on and so far i'm really liking the result that i'm getting guess we'll have to see how it looks once it dries I'm thrilled with the way these look, but I'm not done yet. I want to add some moss to these trees, specifically around the base. After applying Mod Podge to those areas, I use some Woodland Scenics Blended Turf. The application for this is just simply sprinkling on top, pushing it down a little bit, and then knocking off the excess. Then I go back to this little spritz bottle with some Mod Podge water solution so I can seal the moss on the tree so that it will solidify and not come off. You really want to soak the flock so that it solidifies up. You don't want it flaking off after you're done with the project. And this is really going to help make sure that it is something that stays in place for a long time. Right, guys that's going to do it for this diorama tutorial before i go i want to give a huge shout out to my friend terraformer he helped me figure out what i was doing wrong with these and gave me some tips to fix them i'm really proud of the perseverance that i had in this project because i was really frustrated with the way they were going in the beginning and i'm just really glad that i didn't give up and i stuck with it and i ended up with this result hope you enjoyed the video and i can't wait to see you in the next episode Vasco Toys, action figure dioramas and props.